Good morning, my name is Kieran Bray, and today we're going to be going through a little demonstration on ArcGIS knowledge. What we're going to start off first is how to go through data loading within ArcGIS knowledge. So ArcGIS knowledge is graph software that enables users to explore and analyze spatial, non-spatial, unstructured and structured data to accelerate decision making, okay, using graph analytics. So firstly, we need to create the investigation within ArcGIS Pro. We can do this from the catalog view in ArcGIS Pro using the create investigation pane as we have just seen. Okay. When we create a knowledge graph, it creates the graph within your portal for ArcGIS. Okay. As you can see here, I'm just going through and creating the knowledge graph, giving it a name, telling it where I'd like to store that within my portal and who I'd like to share with. We then pick a spatial reference. Currently at the moment, uh, we can only use the WGS 1984 coordinate system. Once we have created the knowledge graph, uh, it will then open up our investigation view. Okay. From here, you'll get an investigation tab at the top where you'll have uh, additional functionality to interact with that graph. So at the moment, my gang war graph is, or investigation is currently empty. Okay. Up the top, we can see there, uh, we could potentially look at creating link charts. We could apply entities to new graphs. We can merge entities if we wish as well. As you'll see in the catalog pane on the right, you'll also get a little group there called investigations. Okay. This will have all your investigations that you currently have access to within your portal. Within there, you can see different entity types, relationship types, and also data loading configurations. So what I'm gonna go through now is how to load data into ArcGIS knowledge, into my gang or investigation. This can be done from a CSV spreadsheet, another feature class, or another table that you may be working with, okay? Firstly, you need to pick your source table. So here I've picked the gang members uh, point feature class. This opens up the low table uh, pane in the middle. So what I'm doing first here is it's pulled in the tables fields, okay? I'm now choosing the fields I'd like to create my entities from. So here we have the column name or field name being name. I'm gonna create the entity type person from that, okay? As you can see, when you select a field or row, sorry here, it'll be red until you complete it. Okay, this is really good to uh, identify steps you may have missed uh, before we proceed to the relationship or creating relationship phase. Now it does, now when we are doing this, you will need to have an understanding of the table you're working with. What I'm also doing here is just merging entities. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna identify if there's uh, multiple types of the same feature and merge them all into one. What I'm doing now is building relationships. So what is the relationships between my entities? Okay, I'm starting with the origin entity, so the name, I'm creating the relationship type. So how is this entity related to the other entity? Okay, is it a member of the gang? Is it a, a rival of the gang, for example? That would be the relationship. Okay. Again, ArcGIS Knowledge isn't gonna go through and pick your relationship for you. It's not gonna identify relationships. That's gonna come back to you to understand your data and how it interacts uh, with each other. Relationships could also be described in one direction from the origin entity to the destination entity as well, okay? Just like when we're creating entities, we also have the merge option on the right, okay? 
So we can check this option to determine if a relationship of the same type with the same origin and destination entities exists in the knowledge graph. Okay. Also with the data load configuration, you can also uh, use pre-existing data loading configuration options as well if you've created them before too. Sometimes while I do this, I might click on the Entities uh, tab in the previous step, just to maybe help jog my memory and give me some ideas of some other relationships that could potentially exist within my data set. Now the data set I'm working with here is just a uh, fictitious gang members uh, data set. It's not overly large. However, you can bring in uh, fairly large data sets to work with within ArcGIS knowledge. Okay. Now we get to the properties tab. In here we can look at our existing entities and potentially create uh, new properties for them if we want as well. We can look at our relationships and the properties of that relationship too. Within the properties uh, step of the data load configuration, you'll notice on the right hand side, there's a little bit of information around each one of the uh, separate boxes that we're currently looking at. Okay, so the property name, the data type as well. The next part of ArcGIS knowledge we can take a look at is the spatial component. So because we're in ArcGIS Pro, we can also uh, identify entities uh, within our graph database that have a spatial relationship. Okay. If we're using point geometry, we can, uh, if we're using a point feature class, we can grab the geometry from that if we would like. Or if we're using a CSV spreadsheet and it's got uh, latitude and longitude values, okay, and an XY fields, we can use them to determine the spatial uh, location of that feature as well, okay. You may do this for multiple entities or you could just do it for one as well. This is great because further on down the track, you can then place your link charts and maps side by side as well. Then we just got the review and run. Okay, so we can just review the summary of the entities, the relationships, and the properties that will be created in the knowledge graph. Okay, when you click run, this goes through and loads all this data set into the ArcGIS knowledge graph. Okay, as well. Depending on the size of your data set, will depend on how long it takes to go through this loading process as well. Okay. While we click run, it's importing the data and going through that process now. It will also identify any errors or warnings that it comes up against along the way. Okay. As you can see, we've got some process complete with errors. Okay. Now you can see there may be some null properties there, which have caused a slight error. However, we've still been able to load in, a, load in our entities and relationships into that knowledge graph as well. Now we're going to look at is how to query our knowledge graph. So we've just loaded in the data. Now we want to start investigating it. So back within ArcGIS Pro, okay, we're currently in viewing our entities within the gang or investigation. Okay. What is good about this is when you select an entity like the Caucasian one, 
on the right hand side, it'll also show you different relationships and any documents that you may have added to it as well. Maybe a PDF, maybe a Word document too. Okay. We can go through and click on each of the entity types on the left hand side to bring up the specific entities that have been found within that database. As you can see, I've got the vehicle color there, right? And a lot of them couldn't be merged. Let's look at the leaders and all the relationships with the leaders, okay, and the members themselves too. I can use my little search bar at the top there to run a graph query on the knowledge graph as well. Okay, as you can see, we can use uh, previous queries to identify matches. So, you know, which person has a vehicle, for example. And we can write that in at the top. Or we can use a search mode as well and search the entire knowledge base for anyone with uh, the name Bacon as well. This is pretty useful if you do have a rather large knowledge graph and you're looking to get or looking for specific entities or relationships. We also have the search and filter option as well from the investigation tab. Okay. Within here, you can also look at some statistics around the knowledge graph too. We also have a query function uh, as well within there that we can also take a look at. Now we're gonna take a look at is creating a link chart and adding in entities. So within ArcGIS Knowledge on the Investigation tab, we have a few options of how we create a link chart, okay? So we can select an entity, add it to a link chart, okay, singular, or we could select all the entities and add it to one rather large link chart. I've just selected one here. Now, the link chart and the symbology function is the same as a normal map with ArcGIS Pro where you can set up the symbology how you would normally from the Appearance tab. Once you do have an entity within there, you can select a specific entity, okay? and you can use the link chart tab to expand its relationships out, okay? This is really useful, okay? So if you were to add in all your entities at once, it may get quite messy. So sometimes just adding in one and expanding it out and seeing the relationships a little bit easier uh, to work with. Okay, you can select uh, any of the entities and expand them and if it has a relationship, they'll show up. We can also go through there and label this link chart as well. Labeling works just like you would labeling a normal feature class in a map. Okay, so you can really configure how you'd like the labels to look, how you'd like the symbology to look as well. So here we have the entity leaders, all the leaders of their gangs. We can also create entities using the create features pane. Okay, so here we have a slightly different link chart. So if I want to add in a new entity manually, okay, maybe it's a new information. I can use the create entities on the right hand side to add that person in, okay, and then use an existing relationship to connect them up. Right. So say if I have a member of this person is a member of the Red Scorpions and I can connect them to entities as well. Now, while we are doing this, you do need to be able to uh, be in edit mode to do that too. Once you have created entities and you've brought them in, okay. You can then start to work with them. Back in the investigation tab, 
you can click on the new drop down and add in uh, new entity types from there as well if you would like or add in new entities too So you can see, just added in a new homegrown entity gang name. Then we can take that if we wanted to and add it to a new map. What this is going to do, it's going to add the link chart entities to your map. Okay, as you can see, it's placed that in up near around Canada there as well. From there, we can start to zoom in on the map closer to the entities that we are working with. Now your entities themselves are showing up in your contents pane on the left hand side, right? So persons, uh, documents as well and the tables for that uh, investigation okay so then again once you have added them into a map we can then go through and symbolize them as well if you would like what may be useful is saving out that symbology uh, that you've set up to a specific style then you can apply that to your entities as you need to as well because we're in ArcGIS Pro we can also move our map and position that next to our link chart as well so they can work side by side you can also link your link chart to your map if you wish as well that can be useful because if you do have lots of entities and a rather large knowledge graph and uh, it's spread out quite wide spatially you can have them join up and be linked together as well now, as we can see, depending on which uh, pane you have open or selected will be the one that's active. Now here, what I'm doing here is just going through and changing the symbology. Here I've just got an intelligence style file and I can change that to a person to make it a little bit easy to identify what. Now, as you notice, as I've selected a person in my map, it then selects the corresponding entity in my link chart. So as I mentioned before, this can be useful if you've got you know, maybe hundreds or thousands of entities and you want to identify them on the map and also see where they are in the link chart as well. What you can also do, uh, if you do have one entity selected in your link chart, you can also use the Select Neighbors option to select uh, its related entities. What we're going to take a quick look at now is graph analytics. So not only can we create knowledge graphs with ArcGIS Pro, we can also analyze them as well using the centrality option from the link chart tab. Okay. From here, uh, you do have a few different options for analysis so we can compute centrality we can see uh, which entity in our knowledge graph has the most relationships we can also potentially use it to identify who might be the most important person within our knowledge graph you know, who has the most connections who is vital to the knowledge graph okay as well So we look at the degree, the in degree, the out degree, the eigenvector as well. The ArcGIS knowledge documentation around analytics has quite a bit of information in all of these uh, different analytical types that we can see. And that comes to the end of our demo. Thank you.